temperature right now out there, 33 degrees. Let's take a look at this circuit, 2.9 kilometres. And it produced a lot of action for us yesterday, Matt, particularly down there in the braking area at Turn 1. And over the years, we've seen some pretty bold moves down there, and I think that we're going to see more again today. Roller coaster ride through 2, 3, 4. Very fast fifth gear in the approach to Turn 5. Saw action again yesterday and even to earlier today in qualifying at 5 as they negotiate the right-hander down there. It's uh, a wild bit of uh, racetrack. Very, very slow up at the hairpin in the valley. And uh, again, surface changes and undulation in the last third of the racetrack as well. But I think the big talking point for us is going to be the stuff that we have already alluded to, which is a combination of tyre and fuel strategy and those numbers that you can see there, because we tend to underplay just how difficult it is to deal with that in the cockpit of the car. Well, think of the guys like Steve Owen yesterday who had the cool suit fail on them, have to go the distance and just literally fry in the cockpit. You've got no other choice. Run you through the Fuso start grid. Thank this will be the great. major talking point. Winner bottom versus Wing Cup down to turn one. They've got a score to settle on both sides. Craig Lowndes and Lee Holdsworth were third and fourth yesterday. That's where they start today. Behind them, Tony D'Alberto, best career qualifier. Will Davison made up 15 spots throughout the race. He said, yeah, it was all right, but at least it was fun passing all those guys along the way. Tim Slade was the unlucky seven racer yesterday when that car cut out on him. That forced the uh, late safety car. Alex Davison tucked in a ninth spot. Russell Ingle inside the top ten. As I mentioned, six race wins. And I can tell you that Russell won't be starting on softs now. He's on hards. Jonathan Webb and Shane Van Gisbergen make up positions 11 and 12 13 goes to david reynolds and yesterday's race winner rick kelly from jack daniels racing starting in 14th garth tander had a pit lane penalty to serve yesterday after tearing up pit lane with the air hose still connected to his car fabian coulthard next to him there's greg murphy and jason bright murph's won a race here before 10 years ago bright he's won three races at this circuit paul dumbrell well he almost became the hidden car number 55 at hidden valley because he went so far off the track we never thought he was coming back. He did, got docked 25 points. James Courtney and Carl Reinland. There's James Courtney, 21st today. He's 13th in the championship. He needs to get a hurry along in the points. He doesn't need me to tell him that. Todd Kelly and Warren Luff, and then Dean Fiore and James Moffat make up 25 and 26. And interesting to see these two guys down the back of the grid. Steve Owen was 10th yesterday in the race. Jason Bardwana finished 8th in the race. And they're on the last row of the grid. So the interesting thing for this start, we know there's history from Wing Cup and Winterbottom from yesterday, but Wing Cup has chosen to put the soft tyre on at the start. So has Lee Holdsworth. They're on position two and four. Look for those two guys to get this jump because they should, on soft tyres, be first and second at the first corner. Yeah, no doubt they'll have tonnes of pace and that's going to dictate the way in which this plays out in the initial phase. The other point that we needed to make at the end of that grid read there Matt and this I find an ex extraordinary figure 0.7 of a second covering 1 to 28 after qualifying don't forget if you are out and about today you can catch sevens coverage on your Telstra next G mobile if you're into your V8 supercar racing you don't want to miss a moment get all the news and views and information then Big Pond Sport is the destination so that's a I mean I just you know how easy it is to be on the wrong side of the timeline in this business mark you make one incorrect move in the cabin of the car adjust the car incorrectly steve owen's going to start from pit lane i got a tip about that earlier on given the way things worked out in qualifying for him they're going to play this a little differently so uh for example james courtney to be down where he is in 21st i mean the number reads so badly you look at the number at a 10-2 with pole at 9-7 not that many years ago Sometimes you'd strut around the pit paddock feeling pretty good about being half a second away from pole. Well, you could be two, you could be on the second or third row based on that. Not so on board, Exactly. So on board with Ingle, we're on board there with James Moffat. We had James Courtney and that great shot of the footwell also. Paul Dumbrell. So we've got so many of these runners today covered from the front of the field. Wing Cup and Winterbottom. Winterbottom's teammate, Will Davison. So we will bring you all the action from the front and the back of the field based on who we've got on board. And remember this guy on the front row of the grid yet again, starting on soft tyres. What are the soft tyres? They're grippier, they're faster, but they'll go away faster as well.
One other little thing to consider, and we've been throwing up so many scenarios, I'm sure that many of you are reaching for the Panadol. <laughs> but here's another one. Panadol's pleased. I wonder how far they'll choose to run for those that have got the softs on at the moment. So if you did what Mark Larkham showed us on the whiteboard before, and you do that thing where you basically look at the race in reverse, yeah. and you sneak the first eight, nine, ten laps out of it, and you take those softs off, Keep them for a rainy day. Might be a while up here actually before that happens, but you keep them for later in the race, just metaphorically speaking. And uh, maybe you could redeploy those again later in the day. That's another thing we have seen done on occasion. So that's yet another of the cards that can be played out of your strategy bag. Everyone in pit lane is saying this is one of the most strategic races of the year. Unfinished business for both Winterbottom and Wind Cup. How will this one play out? And let's not forget that Lowndes and Holdsworth are behind them. Dalberto and Davison tucked in in the third row of the grid. It all points to action aplenty here at Hidden Valley. The tear away down to turn one could well be the most fascinating race we've had. And Mark Winterbottom has absolutely nailed him off the start. Wind Cup on the softer tyres couldn't get it going. Now that is extraordinary. So Winterbottom down there. Oh dear, they're four abreast again. Holdsworth is going to take it wide around the outside and lead them through. Now if you wanted a real nightmare, it would be to have Softs bog it on the line and then waste their value in the early laps having to pass so many cars. That's now what Jamie Wincup faces. And can you imagine already, Frosty will be saying, Winterbottom will be saying, I'm going to make sure oh, that I do Murphy. everything I can to keep him behind Murph and James Courtney get tangled up. Now Steve Johnson almost stalled, he jumped the start slightly, so it'll be interesting to see what the officials say. He jumped the start slightly and then bogged down and almost stalled the car. So his penalty has almost been exercised by where he is in the field. Steve Johnson is way down. David Reynolds and Garth Tanda coming together. Twenty-sixth he is. Right at the back of the field. This is going to be really interesting. So Holdsworth will lead them onto the front straight. A little bit of push and shove between the Jack Daniels car of Todd Kelly and Carl Reinler. There's Winterbottom behind him. Wind Cup on soft tyres. So Winterbottom will be wanting to block as much as he can. Oh, this is nasty. Oh. We've seen this before and it didn't end well. This time, thankfully, it does. Tim Slade right out in the weeds there at one. You can't turn out there, unfortunately. Good bit of braking by Garth Tander, then he braked the car very deep and he was able to get across the front of Ingle. 220 kilometres an hour there. It's a great shot as we see Wing Cup putting pressure on Winterbottom. As Neil said, you can't afford to, sorry, Wing Cup putting pressure on Will Davison, but you can't afford to have the soft tyre on and then be back in the field like this. You basically waste the soft tyre in terms of your total day's effort. Yeah, he'll be pacey and he'll he'll certainly be able to pluck off these cars. Will Davison in his gun sights now. The problem is... Oh, big dive! Turn 14, nice job. That uh, you spend a lot of energy trying to recover the ground. That's to protect the rear tyres. So next you, mark is his teammate. Yeah, you waste a lot of energy basically getting back to where you should have been a few minutes ago. And that's the frustration. But then... That's how it is, he's got to basically concentrate now on what he's got. Holdsworth's out to 2.7 seconds, there's the comparative. And uh, just bogged down for Jamie Winkup and swamped immediately by Holdsworth, by Winterbottom who was alongside and, well, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they started to do a roll call. <laughs> and have a look at this, this was Steve Johnson. And both, both the Jim Beam cars got away terribly. That was James Moffat right at the back, but up further, Steve Johnson. So for those guys, a very difficult start. Now, Wing Cup made a poor start yesterday. With the soft tyre on, the cars are sometimes harder to get away because the initial grip is higher. So he bogged the car down. So you saw Mark Winterbottom with a little bit of wheel spin, which was a very nice start. Wing Cup's start was very average. And this has played perfectly for Lee Holdsworth on the soft tyre, who can go out and control his race knowing that Winterbottom's not going to round him up, knowing that Lowndes isn't going to round him up, 
Wing Cup's the next in queue on the, on the soft tyres and there's still a couple of cars in between him. He'll get past his teammate here, no dramas. So this is free space, if you like, for Lee Holdsworth. These laps, he can just run away and post fastest times. So Wing Cup with huge speed. Lowndes drops the right rear off on the exit of one there. Meantime, the margin 4.1 holds worth to Winterbottom. Based on what happened yesterday, I can't imagine Mark Winterbottom making it an easy passage, even though Jamie's got a lot of car speed with the tyres that are on his car at the moment. So the real winners and losers on the first couple of laps of this race, Garth Tander, seven spots he has gained. And Steve Johnson, obviously the biggest loser, 18 spots he has lost. It's interesting that we're on board with Mark Winterbottom then, and he was also launching off the Turn 6 hairpin from... Uh, first gear as we saw Wind Cup doing yesterday. Here's the dive, turn 14. So carbon copy manoeuvre. Actually it was much easier than I forecast, so that's... Let's get in rhythm. Let's make these guys last as much as a good lap. Mark Dutton on the phone to Jamie Wind Cup. And like you were saying, Cropo, so how much does he have to chew away at those tyres to get that position back? Four laps on the soft tyre fighting through. Well, a fair bit, Matt. He's actually given away five seconds to Holdsworth and used the tyres harder. One quarter of its life. Absolutely. We're all saying 20 laps is about the number. Effectively gone through one quarter of that to get to this point. So Lee Interesting. Holdsworth started fourth and he controls the race. Back at the valley where the two cars on soft tyres lead this race. Lee Holdsworth by five seconds over Jamie Wincup. Third and fourth. It looks as though it's going to get a little bit tight and a little bit pushy between Winterbottom and Craig Lowndes. Lowndes looks like, compared to yesterday, Cropper, that he's actually found some speed because he wasn't in the same hunt as Winterbottom yesterday. So both these guys on hard tyres and Lowndes has taken some ground off Winterbottom over the last two or three laps. Well, three guys that were leading the race yesterday had a, a market leap in speed over those around them. So Holdsworth now will check the gap for you. Last time through it was 5.3 seconds to Jamie. There's the gap. And it is now 5.3 seconds. So nothing much has changed there. 10.59 for Holdsworth and 10.85 for Wincup. Neil, I spoke to both those teams out in front just before the race about 
why they went for the soft tyre option. It was funny, it was two different reasons. In Holdsworth's case, quite cleverly, they thought hot temperatures up here, 25 laps at the end might be too much for soft tyre. They're basing that it's going to degrade too much at the other end of the race. So they're going to put themselves in a bit of a safe zone. In the case of Vodafone Racing, they've just really put a bet each way. Said that's the way we want to do it. No particular science either way. And I said to Craig Lowndes, mate, I'd rather be sitting in your car. So let's see how this plays out. He agreed with that comment. The thing that we've made reference to, which you did on the grid there before though, Larko, as well, is that the mathematical fact here over the years is there's a 60% chance of the safety car. The problem is if that happens in line with that uh, occurrence rate in the past, all that you're doing out there on the softs at the moment is just Basically. getting rid of one of your advantage cards. But weird things happen in this business and uh, the last thing we want to be able to do is forecast it. So let's just see what unfolds here. Shane Van Gisbergen has been doing a bit of hard work. He started in 12th. He's up to 9th. He's been quite aggressive with his moves. He got a good run then onto the straight and down the inside of his teammate. And only just, he just got that done. Alex was quite nice to him on the approach to turn one. We saw lots of drama there. You can see Ross Stone in the black, Jim Stone there in the blue. And they would have been saying, oh, I hope that doesn't end in tears here with two of their lead cars off the road. Always stressful, and that's one of the reasons that Vodafone will have gone one way with soft tyre and the hard tyre for Lowndes is to actually separate the strategies of the cars. Garth Tander, as I said, has gained he had a really fantastic first lap, a great start, and has gained eight positions. Yeah, 15th to 7th. On board here with Russell Ingle. They rolled him out initially, or there was talk of him going out initially on the soft tyre, but they ended up rolling him out on the harder tyre. Mixed up with his old mate, Tim Slade, and uh, down the order at the moment in 11th and 12th. So just for your, your own understanding of the soft tyre versus the hard tyre, so far Holdsworth has set the fastest time of the race with a 10-3-3. The next fastest time on a hard tyre is Mark Winterbottom with an 11.38. So just over a second faster is the current difference. Now anybody that was going to do what Mark Larkham showed us in the beginning, which is work from the back of the race, you get yourself to a point where you can fill from here, stop one more time, fill and get home. We're in that window now. That opportunity is basically now, thereabouts. We'll see whether anybody does that. Don't think there'll be too many. Well, the problem is you can only do that if you've started on hard, basically, because at the moment you haven't used enough fuel to be able to sit there for long enough to put four tyres on. So if you come in early, it's a pretty quick fuel stop, and with a pretty quick fuel stop, you can only put the two rear tyres on the car. And the reason Mark's saying that is that clearly you've not burnt terribly far down from your full fuel of 75 litres and so returning it back to full again won't take very long at the flow rate of 4 litres a second. And, and Neil, I'm actually with you on that. I actually don't think a lot of people will do that, but that, that is the point. It's a fascinating element to this race. We have seen that strategy play out very often this year. It's won races, but throw the soft tyre into the mix. Oh, oh, that's an enormous That's a tyre failure. From Jason Bright. He started to commentate halfway through that spin. So that's a that's a massive engine failure. And and there's oil down there everywhere. And Courtney off the road. Ryan Lewin as well. There will be oil everywhere in that. That, that will have a one metre wide. Look at the oil there on that stripe down the road. No wonder they're all off the road. That is a, an immense amount of oil. Yeah, basically for the duration of the braking distance. So right at pretty much peak revs in top gear for the best part of 150 to 200 metres. The Team BOC car has absolutely lunged itself all the way down there. Safety car, I would say. I'm think well, where he is, well, yeah. It's hard because it's it's parked oh, off. Oh, 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 there's the leader, and he made it in. Oh, only well just, done. Only oh. just. He had to skate around there. Yeah, they'll all look for an alternative line down there now. They'll be driving in weird places. Yeah, like they are, exactly, on cue. So down the inside of the oil is where Mark Winterbottom and Craig Lowndes were braking in the braking zone. And over on the left-hand side, we can't quite pick that up. Oh, there's Ingle out of control. Has he made it? He's made it. Well done. Oh, 
straight off the road goes Rick Kelly. So... Safety car pulls and flag, safety car pulls and yeah. flag, safety car stand right. I'm, I'm surprised that call was as late as it was because uh, someone was going to do what we just saw there and find the oil and then spear off towards a parked car. Which is enormous blow. Bang, that's where it goes. And from there on, oil everywhere. For the, the amount of oil there is just unbelievable. The amount of speed that he kept carrying too. I mean, that car just went forever. Now, does, do they come in? Lap 11? Yeah. <laughs> and what do you do? Do you put the soft tyre on in the middle and you get a yield? Do you? I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I, seriously, the Holdsworth and Wink Cup are in. So, <laughs> we said at the start that this is a very interesting race. This has just spiced it up. OK, so the two leaders coming in. They've done 11 laps on those soft tyres. So they've got to put four tyres onto hard tyres. Yeah, just to make the point there, you can't split them. You've got to use one or the other. And that means that for both these guys, they've got life in those tyres that they could utilise later in the race. And I made this point right at the very beginning that that is a possibility. Holdsworth kept his position against uh, Wing Cup. But lost his margin. Yep. Main ground for sure. So, there are about... 20 cars in pit lane. Yeah, those that haven't at this point, Will Davison, Paul Dumbrell, Fabian Coulthard, James Moffat, four that haven't pitted. And one of the difficult things with this circuit, because there's so many different grades of tar and so many different colours, for the amount of guys to be caught out by that oil means that you can't see it very easily. It's not very visible. It certainly had an impact. The Petters safety car out there. We'll grab a quick break. Well, that strategy game that was looking a little bit simple at the start has now got very complex. <laughs> because there are four guys, Will Davison, Paul Dumbrell, Fabian Coulthard and James Moffat elected not to stop. This was the moment that Jason Bright's engine just gave up on him and away the Team BOC car went. So a whole stack of oil left behind. And Stevie Johnson there just exiting pit lane with millimetres in it. Just to Murphy. Yeah, just squeezing in. This is Jason Bright. Second Frustrating uh, walk back home after having done the same thing yesterday. And uh, his speed that he rotated off the end of the straight, it's pretty spooky. And, and as he was guy rating, he was commentating. Yeah, he had the finger on the radio button. 
<laughs> Mind you, he, only, he half got the sentence out and then I noticed yeah. it stopped. Stopped pretty reason. quickly, yeah. <laughs> I, don't so know we saw... I think he was yelling out for help. Exactly. So we saw all this drama yesterday. Oh, a similar way. circumstance. The trading post racer of Will Davison now leads the race. Dumbrell behind him, Fabian Coulthard and James Moffat. They stayed out while the rest went in for the pit stop. Very good restart, Will Davison. Got on with it straight away and got a real yield because of it. Now you've got to watch this stripe of oil. So you see them all on the inside or the outside of it. There's two distinct lanes. You oh, don't want to be in the middle of it. Like that. <laughs> and gone. And he'll go. So you can't do that. It's a strange thing for Alex to do because it's not like he wouldn't have known it was there. So Alex Davison goes off. Will races off in front. There's Lee Holdsworth, so Lee is back on the hard tyres, or now on the hard tyres, and so too is Jamie Wincup. So they've burned 11 laps out of their soft tyre set. Oh. Riding with Winterbottom, position seven. Make that position eight. Just dropped a spot. James Moffat there, sneaking by in the Jim Beam car. James yet to stop for fuel and tyres. A great part of the circuit this, isn't it? It's a lot more rise and fall than you think and it's a very fast section. It's a bit of Jason Bright's debris, so it's uh, spat some ugly metallic bits and pieces down there into the braking area at one. Gee, he left some calling cards, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll take a long while for this oil section to dry up. And, and you never want to be the first one to go and give it a try, do you, Croppo? You, you look at it all the time, I really should be able to drive on that soon. <laughs> yeah, and, but let someone else prove the theory. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You don't need to be the pioneer. This is another section where the rise and fall, Neil calls it the roller coaster, but it's a fast right and left in fifth gear as we see Jason Bright walking back. He's been walking for 20 minutes. Yeah, it's a long way down there. <laughs> At 270 kilometres an hour it disappears under your feet fairly quickly but when you're on your feet it's a completely different story. Very frustrating considering the run that Jason's had in the last couple of race meetings. A brilliant run in Perth and at Winton, northeastern Victoria. It's come to a sad end this weekend unfortunately but I'm sure he'll bounce back. They've got some speed in that car. Guys, I saw it at the end of the pit lane there. Greg Murphy appeared to me to be the only guy that put a soft tyre on in this centre section of the race. So I just caught up with Barry Ryan, his team manager. He said, they, a bit like Holdsworth earlier on, he wasn't prepared to put a soft tyre on with 30 laps to go at the end of the race. There was a safety car there, didn't think it would go the distance. Plus, he said, had to try something different. Understand that. Um, Neil, good call of yours. I think this option of putting the soft tyre back on, when those tyres come in, they're probably about 105 degrees centigrade. If they can put them in the shade now, get them back down to 30 or 40, I talk about baking the cake, that'll cure them just nicely. You might get another reasonable run out of them. Oh, Lucky, you still believe in Santa. Where's the shade? <laughs> Where is the shade? It's 40 degrees out there. South of the border. <laughs> so the timing monitor is now officially updated that fact that Greg Murphy, the only guy out there on Ooh. soft tyres. So we'll watch Murph start to pick them off. Jason Bright, the longest, loneliest walk here in Darwin. <laughs> Mate, uh, I like you, but we should stop meeting like this. It's um, <laughs> becoming a bit much, but yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what we did coming into this weekend, but um, you know, we, we could do with a dose of luck. We uh, you know, had the puncher yesterday, and, and uh, you know, that was a big engine let go. You know, the engine's been pretty good all weekend. It's, it's pretty disappointing. Well, mate, sad news. Uh, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, Brighty, a winner in WA and a winner at Winton was on a good thing for a while and it's come unstuck this weekend. Tough weekend. They'll bounce back uh, Team BOC. Jamie Winkup keeps on taking that far line down the right-hand side at the end of the main straight. So Will Davison leads the race from Paul Dumbrell. Lee Holdsworth is third. You're riding with fourth Winkup. Behind him is Winterbottom. Dumbrell's about to get pressure from Holdsworth. Up here at turn five. Wing Cup and Holdsworth, nothing in them. Two wheels dip on the side. Yeah. Now up at turn six on the inside. And Holdsworth gets the job done here. Good Quite pass. Important, yeah, important move for Lee there to take a little bit of the pressure off that Jamie was applying because the way things pan out, remember that Lee was the leader, he lost his margin in the safety car and the ensuing stop. Oh, oh, this is always hard here. 
Did he get away with that? Only just. He had to stick it on the dirt to do it. There really isn't any room for two cars wide up there. But it does show the level of aggression because the Lee Holdsworth pass was a very aggressive pass and so was that. It does show that and Winkup knows that the race is Holdsworth. That's right. He's the one that's got the ideal spot at the moment. This is Lowndes. Murphy's starting to power through the field now. He's at least half a second clear oh. in terms of lap times with that soft tyre underneath him. Garth was in uh, the, he was in the, the right spot. The Lounge parked him on that alley. Yeah, you can test it out for us. Yeah. So David Reynolds is the next target for Greg Murphy. This is this move, such aggressive move. I don't know where he got the track space. I mean, he created it on the grass, but Wink Up made it stick. This is from the rear of Holdsworth's car, and as you can see, used almost half a car across the grass to be able to give himself enough room to not make contact. And Paul Dombrell did a pretty good job also. I think they both did a very good job there. Yeah. Because to not have contact, yeah. Neil, this was extraordinary. We've seen some big incidents up there over the years. So let's watch the Pepsi Max crew car number 11 start to push its way through the field on lap 19 of 69. It was certainly a committed move by, by Jamie. But when you make a move like that where you basically you shoot everything you've got and there's no pulling back, you really got to hope that the other guy's going to play the game with you because if Paul was belligerent and just went, I'm going to be another half car with further to the left, that is going to be contact because Jamie's so fiercely committed. So it's a, it's a beautiful move, but, but uh, a lot of risk involved. Just looking at some relative times for Greg Murphy, the fastest time he's done on this soft tyre is a 1.11.8. Remember, Lee Holdsworth and Jamie Wincup went into the 110s quite easily, 110.3 and 110.5 when they were on the softs. Traffic's playing a part here. Coulthard and Dalberto in front of Murph, who's in his 399th Australian Touring Car Championship race today. It's a great record. It's been a very competitive racer for many, many oh, years. He's oh. given Coulthard a little love tap at turn seven. The difficult part for Greg is, as you said, Matt, the traffic determines your speed in some ways. So the nice, clear track that you need for a soft tyre to get the advantage is clearly not there. Well, that's why he was so aggressive. He knew that he had to get Coulthard out of the way. Otherwise, he's just going to chew up those tyres. Murphy is on the move. Will Davison leads the race here at Hidden Valley as Lee Holdsworth has a look at him.
Welcome back. Things change in the blink of an eye around here. Gary Rogers in pit lane having a good look because Lee Holdsworth is leading the race from Jamie Wincup. But big problems for Garth Tander. Car number two going back down the list here. He's got big troubles and he'll be heading for pit lane. So Holdsworth did get the move on Will Davison. Jamie Wincup went with him after that. So that's your top two. And uh, this replay will show you the lead change. Holdsworth ducks in on the inside. Now, I just heard Garth say he might need to put it in the garage. I haven't been able to unravel at this point what the problem with the car is. We just got up around turn five a little on further on after this and um, yeah, just propped, just propped, and he he went ballistic on the radio. So that was Wincup getting past uh, Will Davison. So one and two is now Holdsworth Wincup and. Will has Mark Winterbottom on his tail. Greg Murphy has made it up to fifth spot. Yeah, and there goes car two. Really weird. I mean, there's no... What a shocking weekend. No damage that them. you can see. Jammed in gear or something or something weird going on. So we'll get Pepsi, to the bottom of it very shortly. Pepsi Max crew car with the soft tyres. Greg Murphy up to fifth. Now, we saw him very competitive yesterday. So if this, in this phase of the race, if this gets him to a, a point in the field where he's, say, in the top five, and then they put the hard tyre on versus Holdsworth and Winkup, he won't be too far away. Well, what it's done is it's taken him out of that mid-pack where he started 17th. So they took the gamble and said, let's make the move now. Let's clear out of all this trouble area that we can get, see how much benefit we can get out of the soft tyre. And it's proving to work a treat. How it plays out further down the track is, is yet to be known. So the two teammates battle for third and fourth position. Will Davison still hasn't come in for his pit stop, so he's in effect not really in third position. And his tyres are older, so relative to the guy that we're looking at through his front bumper, He's going to be struggling a little bit more, Will Davison. So Mark Winterbottom should have a little grip advantage, and he does and uses it. Under brakes into one. And they're still separating that oil track down at turn one, so clearly it's still slippery. And as we said before, you don't want to be the first to give it a test, so they're just being cautious. Yeah, guys, I'm just trying to try to get out of the way of the boys here in the HRT garage. They're in underneath the front left of Garth's car. Apparently there's been some contact, I'd say some steering damage or front left suspension damage. They are bitterly disappointed down here because after a really tough weekend, they're very much thinking of their fans. They reckon the chassis balance was good, Garth was in good shape, they had good tyres in the bank, so they are really down and out. It was a weird one because he came out of turn one and just going up through the roller coaster, he, he, he basically slowed down Larko and then come to a halt before turn four, cruised around turn five and then reported to come in. So quite strange in, in terms of what that breakage was. Greg Murphy now up to fourth position just by Will Davison. Murph's times that much better than probably equal right now. Now, Scafe, just want to clear up a couple of matters. Firstly, mate, I do believe in Santa Claus because I reckon you're going to buy me a beer, open your wallet at the bar tonight, so there you go. Secondly, those soft tyres that came off both those cars, I noticed they didn't go and throw them in the tent or the truck out the back. They've got them nicely cooling in the shade at the back of the garages. Just baking up, mate, so watch this space. All right, Larko. Uh, Richard Holway just asked, while you two were rabbiting on, uh, <laughs> Lee Holdsworth... What were the stickies like? And Lee thought about it for a minute, he came back and he said, I reckon they've got another six or eight laps left in them. So what Richard Holway's doing at the moment, he's sitting there looking at his strategy document. Oh, Slade, Reynolds up the inside at six. So he's sitting there wondering whether or not he can use them as a playing card for later in the day. So he's uh, thinking about See, Scavey, that's funny, isn't it? I was just in talking to Richard, saying, mate, what are you going to do with those sticky tires you got there, mate? Put them in the shade. There's <laughs> Richard. <laughs> hey, this has got drama written all over it, this little pack here. Dumbrell, Slade, Reynolds, Steve Johnson, Russell Ingle, and behind them, Michael Caruso. If they all get away from this unscathed, it'll be a miracle. 
one of them in that pack there. I didn't see exactly who had a big lock up into the last corner there, right in the middle of the show. Yeah, it was Michael Caruso. Last time around, Greg Murphy's time on the soft tyre was a 1.12.6. Jamie Wincup's time on the hard tyre was a 1.11.9. And when Will Davison comes in, they're also likely to make a rear roll centre adjustment on that car to calm the back of it down. It's a little bit too oversteer. It's hurting the rear tyres too much at the moment. So you also see the difference in styles and the difference in the way the engineering groups go about these setups and the technique in which the drivers use. So the way that the Vodafone car makes the first part of the corner fast, two different lines at the top of the hill there, very classic line for Lee Holdsworth, wide entry, classic line, and Jamie Winkup uses a very narrow entry and maintains the corner speed by using the front of the car very efficiently. So... It's James Moffat, by the way, just rejoining there in the Jim Beam car. And Richard Holway saying there's 15 to go on these tyres. So Lee Holdsworth and Jamie Winkup will be doing all they can to, to drive the car as straight and as good as possible to look after these, these rear tyres. On the subject of looking after tyres, Greg Murphy's last lap was 13-1. It may have been traffic effective, but I think he's actually already seen the best out of his softer tyre. So those around him on the harder tyre are actually quicker on that last lap at least. Well, some in front, some behind, so he's sort of tipped over the edge there. So Wing Cup now on the inside of Holdsworth at six. Puts Wing Cup in the lead of this race. Uh, the only driver. guy yet to stop is Will Davison, so Paul Dumbrell in the bottle o entry for Rod Nash. That's done. So there's uh, those four cars that are out of sequence. This is Russell Ingle down the inside of Steve Johnson at turn one. Oh. And wheels locked. Bang, bang, bang. David Reynolds. David Reynolds on the outside was caught out as the innocent bystander. Michael Caruso in the middle of that. So Ingle started it. He bumped. Johnson bumped Dave Reynolds. And off Dave Reynolds goes in the Stratco Commodore. And Courtney, the teammate to this man on screen, is 19th at the moment. Will Davison in now that the... Lane's clear at Ford Performance Racing, so that cleans up all cars to have stopped. Here he is. Uh, James Courtney, the point I wanted to make there, he's 19th at the moment, and he's complaining bitterly about poor balance with the car. And the poor balance that the guys talk about is either understeer, which is not enough front grip, or oversteer is not enough rear grip, and most of their complaints in this style of race, in these conditions, comes from not having enough rear grip, the car slides around too much and HRT guys have been complaining about it all weekend. This has been a pretty lively battle with Ingle and Caruso. Now Grant McPherson, engineer for Will Davison, just said we're going to do the full stint here on the hards. So that means he'll empty out the fuel tank from this point. I'll do those numbers for you in a moment. And then he said it'll be a short stint on softs. So they'll play the soft tyre at the end. And uh, so we'll have to watch that. That could be very effective because they've got it's a pretty short window. The only thing they've got to be careful of is the precise moment they choose it. If they leave it to be too narrow as an opportunity, they won't have enough track time to be able to climb over those that they've given track position to. And then conversely, if they go too early... You burn the tyres. Burn the tyres. So Ingle holding off Michael Caruso. Credit too to Tony D'Alberto, who's maintaining his position inside the top 10. I'll run you through the 10 while we're at it. Jamie Wincup from Holdsworth, Winterbottom third. Murphy, the only one on soft tyres right now, fourth, Lowndes, then Shane Van Gisbergen, sixth. D'Alberto, Tim Slade, Russell Ingle, and Michael Caruso. Now, silly for Greg Murphy now because he's dumping time on those soft tyres. He should come in, put the hard tyre on, and get, it, get him to a point where he splits the rest of the race now. And they've not, I mean, they haven't made this 20 lap mythical window that we're talking about. He's done 17 on them so far and they're dead. And they started to go south a couple of laps ago. That's so right. 17's a, lap, mate, a very generous number. So go, going back to say, for example, Will Davison, I reckon the magic number is going to be about 15, 15 laps. So we'll look at the whole field for you here. There's our race leader, Jamie Wincup. 1.8 second margin to Lee Holdsworth and then Big chunk of time back to Mark Winterbottom. Murph's Greg Murphy about on. to be cleaned up by Craig Lowndes. So you've got to get in 
get those softs off. I'm surprised that uh, he's pressing on, but I think might have to for his fuel windows there. Van Gisberg and Delberto, Slade, Ingle, Caruso, Johnson, Kelly, Bargwana, Webb, Rick Kelly, Fiore, Stevie Owen, Alex Davison, Courtney Luff, Reynolds, Will Davison, uh, Paul Dumbrell, Fabian Coulthard, James Moffat, Carl Reinlett, Garth Tander. 27th and uh, what is it? six laps down. All the cars were out of shot by the time you were rolling those out. That shows how slow my old-fashioned brain is. <laughs> The human abacus <laughs> trying to catch up. Team Vodafone are very comfortable there. And they should be feeling all right because they've got one guy leading the race, the other side of the garage. Craig Lowndes is in fourth. And he's got around Greg Murphy on soft tyres. And they've got six or seven laps to go, Matt, before that critical lap number. Murph's going again, another lap on those softs. So what he's doing is trying to get to that number that, that Mark Larkham explained at the start of the race. And a 14-3-8 for Murphy versus a 12-1-2 for Winkup. So 2.2 seconds slower than the lead car. You just can't afford and, to do it. And like we said at the start, when they go off, they really oh, go off. They're just oh, unbelievable. Three times the degradation in terms of rate of time loss. So. Wink up again, shown beautiful driving technique, great car setup, very nice flow, and is using all the road. You watch him drive the car. He is certainly the benchmark guy in the field at the moment. Let's see what happens after this next pit stop. We've talked about the benefits of having the soft tyre. This is the flip side of what's happening to Greg Murphy right now. It's, it's working in reverse. He's starting to go back through the field because all the grip out of that tyre is gone. It is starting to degradate at a very fast race. Uh, and the uh, lap time's going away. Now he's down in eighth position. Let's run you through the Mother Energy highlights from the very beginning. And Mark Winterbottom got a really good start. Jamie Wincup, however, certainly did not. Down to turn one, we held our breath down here. Will Davison was in it, Craig Lowndes was in it, Alex Davison was in it, but Lee Holdsworth, who was the only other guy aside from Wing Cup to start on softs, got the benefit. The engine went on car eight at 270 clicks down the main straightaway, and Jason Bright's second DNF for the weekend left a whole lot of oil out there. 
and there were victims after that which triggered the safety car. And then it was tippy toe for some, not for others. <laughs> As uh, Rick Kelly was a was a victim, Jamie Wincup had to pick his way back through the field. So they went in and they took those soft tyres off the leading two, came back out on hards and have continued to work their way back up to the top of the leaderboard. Lee Holdsworth was the first to round up Will Davidson, who elected not to stop. And not long after that, Jamie Wincup went as well. Not long after that, Wincup would go back to the top of the leaderboard, where he holds a 4.1 second advantage now over Lee Holdsworth. So the strategy is still playing out. Most of the field will have a four fresh soft tyres to put on at the back end. Holdsworth and Winkup have a half year set. Murph has dumped his because they're no longer any good to him and he's been through pit lane. And uh, the problem that he's now got is that he's probably on the slightly wrong side of the fuel risk at the moment to get all the way to the end of the race without having to get some more fuel. So it sort of translated from one type of headache to another. But for the time being, he's got new tyres, lots of grip, full load of gas, and he'll have some pep in his step again for a short while until the next problem looms. So he's either got to save a little bit on the run here, or maybe another safety car intervenes and gets him off the hook. Just to show you the punishment that these tyres get, this is Murph's right rear tyre that's just come off. Now, first, it was very difficult to get them off because the nut, all this gets so hot in here, and it's torqued to a very specific um, uh, uh, tension to come off at a certain temperature. It was so hot, they were hard to get off. Now, here's my heat gun. Have a look. This has been sitting here for a minute and a half already. If I go through that tyre, you can see there's 100 degrees, 101 degrees centigrade. Now, I put that on there when it first came in, 122 degrees centigrade. Now, there'd only be one thing hotter than that. That'd be Greg Murphy sitting in the car. I'd say it'd be about 4,000. <laughs> that looks like it's in the shade, Larko, that spot there. That's a good spot for oh, it. How are you boys going up there with your air-conditioned little unit? Good. So, Gregory Murphy on better tyres. That car will feel very good now, Neil. There's, 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 there's something great. There's something, I know. There's something great about having bad tyres and then putting good tyres on, isn't it? Because the car just feels immediately like a gem. You turn into Superman. <laughs> All of a sudden, you can brake, you can use the throttle, you can lean on the car in the mid corner. <laughs> Suddenly, not quite so hot, the cockpit as it felt a few minutes ago. <laughs> So Wing Cup from Holdsworth, Winterbottom, Lowndes, Van Gisberg and Slade, Dalberto, Ingle, Johnson and Caruso. That's your top 10. Lap 37, this critical number, which is the, the first chance to put your last set of tyres on and get to the end of the race, is now right on the cusp. It'll be in the next now for the next two laps to get you to this critical last stop based on what we saw with Greg Murphy's car. Really wounded with about 17 racing laps fed into those softer Dunlop tyres. There's no way that you can afford to basically run them for a big long stint from this far out from the chequered flag. Exactly. So, you shorter need, run. so what do you reckon? You need to get to 52 or something? Maybe yeah. a bit more? Yeah, 15, 16 reckon, laps? Yeah, I reckon 15 laps on them is, yeah. seems to be about the number. So you've got to get to about lap 54. We're watching uh, Jonathan Webb leading this pack, Rick Kelly, Dean Fiore's all over the back of the Jack Daniels car and Alex Davison tucked in behind them. One of the really good movers has been this man, although he's got some damage along the way. Started 20th up to 10th for Michael Caruso and his teammate Lee Holdsworth is second. So Gary Rogers Motorsport looking in good hands. His windscreen, that would be the oil. incredibly hard to see out of the oil from uh, Jason Bright earlier in the race and then the dust and so many spots around this circuit. Has, have a look at the windscreen of Michael Caruso's car. Very average. So you see the amount of grip on the outside of those curbs now at turn five and turn six where the rubber's gone down on the painted concrete and the guys are actually purposely driving the cars out over those curbs to land on the on the rubber and that line that Michael Caruso used just there at the top of the hill at turn 11 very similar to the line used by Jamie Winkup. So, so Will Davison now gets around Warren Luff and Carl Reinler's there remember Will went the long way he didn't go in on that first set of pit stops went out to lap 28 
rejoin right at the back of the field, obviously, and now is trying to get all that track position back again for the next segment of the race. There's some wounded cars out there, Matt. Have a look at the right-hand front of Carl Rindler's car there. The nose to tail damage in those early laps and then at the restart was pretty significant. The back of Warren Luff's car damage there. You can see also there's, there's hardly a car that isn't wounded. The back of Dean Fiore's car there. Yeah, guys, the track temperature now at 37 degrees, so it's hard work on tyres. Gary Rogers just saying he's pretty confident that Lee Holdsworth has plenty of good rubber up his sleeve, and uh, they're feeling pretty good about the run to the line now. Yeah, he's done a really good job, Barretts. I mean, they always, we, we say this a lot, that they punch above their weight. They're a very efficient and well-organised team. And for them to be right up there battling for win, with Wink Cup, is, uh, is a great job. Seven seconds behind Jamie Winkup now. Mark Winterbottom a further, almost five seconds back from Holdsworth and another five seconds back to Lowndes. So as I said, this race will heat up in terms of getting to this number, but Neil's point is an important one. If you're going to use the soft tire, then you've got to run longer. Now this is a soft tire now. Yes, yeah, Gabe, it's, it's a really good point. I just had one of... Keep going, Larko. Yes, yeah, sorry, mate. It's a good point, Scapey. I was just talking to one of the engineers. What Greg Murphy just did, he actually did everyone a favour. Yeah. Because they were watching really closely and with interest and asking me with my thermal gun, how did that tyre run with Murph go? So, and, it, and full credit to um, Richard Holway with Holdsworth car at the start. He did say right at the start of this race, gee whiz, not prepared to run 30 laps on a tyre at the other end of the race or do a long stint. Good call. Now yeah, they know. That's, that's the point, isn't it? Now they know because Murphy was the test case that 15 laps... And then she starts to go south on him, for sure. And this is a bold move now of Rick Kelly's. I can't, I mean, we've just been talking about it here, thinking about what this means. I can't work out what the gain might be here. But there's a real, a real problem looming here for guys because that safety car intervention changed all the, we use the term window, we try and avoid it, but I can't think of a better way of describing it at the moment, changed the windows. But if you take a 31 lap range from stopping at 14, it gets you on this load of fuel to 45. It compels you to do 24 laps to the end of the race. Greg Murphy just demonstrated that that's not doable. And even the the Triple Eight guys that probably have been the best on the soft tyre in recent times, they're saying 20 laps is sort of the threshold. So we see Rick Kelly with a very long run, and other guys will be wanting to get to this sort of 53-54 number golden question will the track personality change by that stage of the race to give them more tire life out of the soft is that a... well, I don't think so no. there's going to be an, there's going to be an awful lot of activity very very soon Holtzworth's coming in this lap I just I think I heard a message so uh, any tick of the clock now there's going to be a burst of activity but the real problem is you, the rules say you've got to get onto the soft tire we all know that I can't see how you can get 24 odd laps out of the tire so we start thinking about those that have got a, are in a different position here. So those four that were the odd men out early on that have taken a little hit out of their tyres in a different sequence, they might be able to play this card a little differently. But I need to work some more numbers to see how that's going to work. But it's, it's fascinating. But I think over a longer run now, the harder tyre would be, if it's a 20 or 25 lap run, the hard tyre will be faster over that period of time. So you probably find that they wouldn't put the reused tyre on anyway. You can see Holdsworth losing time, roughly 0.6 of a second across the last four laps with Jamie Winkup. So Winkup out to an 8.6 second lead over Holdsworth. And as we've just heard, there's Lee Holdsworth coming in. So the first one to blink yeah. between the Wink Cup Holdsworth battle is Lee. I've got to the bottom of my own silly brain here. So now the fact that they've ticked the soft tyre box early, come in, gas up and get to the end with the hard tyre, that's, that's probably the solution, isn't it? For these guys. Yeah. And the hard tyre now over a longer period yeah. definitely got This is what you were saying. I just needed to think it through. Waiting on kill. You'll be ready to roll. Oh. Just a little bit. 
so both in. Wind Cup had about an eight second advantage on the way in there. Yeah, so these two, so both Holdsworth and Wind Cup are going to be the stars of the field unless someone's got miracle life out of the soft. Neil, it was a correct point you said about working fuel numbers and how that ties in with the fuel strategy and the tyre strategy. I just spoke to a team who actually got their driver sacrificing a little bit of speed to conserve fuel just so they have to do less laps on that soft tyre at the end. So there you have it. Yeah, so we were basically saying the whole time the real advantage in this race is a sprint on the soft tyre at the end. But the fuel strategy means that you can't sprint because the last window is too long. So what we're going to see now is some guys coming in later, but the two class guys in the field today so far have been Winkup and Holdsworth, and Winkup's got a bigger gain. Let's just have a look at the time there. Eight seconds was the number, Matt. And it's probably about the same, about seven seconds by now. So the gap has sort of remained the same. So the critical thing for these guys Car 88 and car 33, they've already ticked the box in the regulations that says you have to use four soft tyres throughout the yeah, course of this that's race. That's the really key part of the statement. Everybody else is finding themselves in a position now where they're boxed in to having to pluck them off the rack yeah. and do a huge stint or face another stop, which is a disaster. That's right. So this is going to be awesome to watch. All these guys come charging through the field and then all go back through the field. <laughs> well, as we saw Greg Murphy, Greg was coming, he was coming like a steam train. He's waving at all the people he's passing, then they're all waving at him about 10 laps later. It was like an elastic band, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it's the whole friends and enemies thing. You've got to be a little bit careful on both, in both directions on the way up and down. <laughs> there he is. So Mark Winterbottom is the leader on track from Craig Lowndes and Shane Van Gisberg and Tim Slade has come into pit lane. That diffuser on the back of Greg's car is a little bit of a worry because there was a car taken off the track yesterday to remove that apron. It's that little area under the rear bumper with the Volvo sticker on it and that's the casing around the back of the fuel cell in the cars. It cleans up the exit airflow under the bottom of the car and uh, that gets I would say much worse than it is now. They'll have to come in and deal with that. And that would do it for Greg, wouldn't it? Based on those tyres that he's driven on. <laughs> you can It'd be a circuit breaker. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, again. Oh, no. That's, that's still hooked up. It was the same thing as yesterday. And it's hit one of the crew members on, on release. So, uh, so, as we've seen before, the activity there is very quick and lots of pressure on the teams to get this right. It couldn't get the air hose out and watch this come back. Ooh. That's, um, that, that's horrific. Okay, Lowndes. We'll just hope that crew member's okay. We'll make sure. Pit lane looks pretty good here, mate. So this is the air coupling. And fuel coupling. Very good work, very precise. So the minute the car flinches and that air coupling has got tension on it, you can't release it off the spike. That's right. So it's got a little collar on it and uh, you put a little bit of side pressure on it, it won't come off the spike, and that's what happened before there with Todd. And the way it flicked back, that's an awful image. No problems for uh, Jonathan Webb. So remember, pretty much all of these guys are now going on the soft tyres. Well, they're, they're marching off for gangplank because there's still 24 laps to go and Greg Murphy's soft tyres only lasted him really 15 effective laps. And James Courtney has just set the fastest lap of the race at 10.07 on the soft tyre. So there are a lot of guys out there now. Lowne, Slade, Kelly, Ingle, Dalberto, Johnson. 
covers roughly half the field. Here's Caruso, winner bottom in as well. And out. And of those cars on soft tyres, it's basically everybody from Lowndes backwards. Lowndes is eighth. And everybody further back in the field trying to get a yield late in the race on the soft tyre. But as we've said, it's a very long... Uh, oh. Todd, problem front to uh, left. The left front feels like it's just fallen off the car. Yeah, it's because no, the, the nuts off it. The left the voice front. of Todd Kelly needs to slow it down. Slow it down, Todd. Slower. Yeah, it's got no nut. Has it? No. It definitely came off around turn five. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't bump the curve. On. So remember, it was uh, Todd that we saw in the pit lane there. He's done a good job to get that back. He has done a good job to get it back. Hey, hey, so just nice and slow, we're going to get you to pull up yeah. out the front. We're I don't know how he's going to get through here, though. We've seen cars crashed in there before. In fact, Craig Lowndes come to a stop in there in one of the years where the car was basically just wedged in that pit lane entry. Well, so no, Todd Kelly now, there's yeah. Mark Larkham on standby. And the wheel nut is off, I think, Larka. You're right, mate. The nut is off. There's a little retention this week. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing holding that on there. That was well driven to keep that on the car. Which is unusual. They have a little retention system on a little spring that the nut shouldn't be able to come off. So something has gone pear shaped. But I was just saying earlier on, I mean, the temperatures that these are operating on now, um, things aren't as per normal. I saw in that. all of those pit stops, a lot of teams battling getting nuts off. So what? we just got some vision then, Larko. It looked like the captive nut has actually come out of the wheel. Actually, it looks like it's machine. Yeah itself in half. Maybe the wheel wasn't on the pegs properly. So, yeah, have a look at that. This it's is it actually machining on. itself up. Yeah, look, it sliced itself in half. It's actually it's strange, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, very strange. And normally when that happens is you always get a lot of damage to the left-hand front hub. So whether the car can actually have another wheel put on it, who knows? Jamie Winkup leading this race from Will Davison and Lee Holdsworth. Well, it's certainly on here in so many different ways because so many different guys are in a different position. Jamie Wincup leads the race on hard tyres and will take it to the end. Will Davison second. 
Last stop, he's only done one stop, Will, so he last stopped on lap 28. And this replay here showing a bit of argy-bargy between the teammates, Mark Winterbottom and Paul Dumbrell. And Lee Holdsworth is third. Oh! <laughs> what was that about? I didn't understand. They just... I think he was trying to clear some space for Frosty and then for whatever reason he's, they've ended up crossing over each other there. So I, I'm not sure. Looked a bit ugly. Did, didn't it? Especially for... Imagine if they were enemies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sad they didn't know where each other, where the other guy was. <laughs> Where'd you go? I don't know. Where'd you go? <laughs> He was like Casper, wasn't he, in the, so in the he's rear vision mirror there for a second. Sorted out down to turn seven, what do you reckon? <laughs> now remember that Will Davison stopped on lap 28. And on our conservative fuel numbers, he should be able to get through as far as lap 59. There's 51 laps already banked. He doesn't have to go that far, by the way. He doesn't have to take it all the way out to the end. But he is facing the prospect of a relatively uh, short stint on, soft. on the softer tyre. So we've been talking about the prospects of 88 and 33, and they're on the hard tyre. It'll depend on how much they degrade in the back end of their life now at the hards, and how much the initial gain is on the soft tyre for Will Davison and what the taper rate looks like on his, but he's a factor. And remember, when he comes in, puts those tyres on, he's gonna drop all the way back down the list again. Well, yeah, just, that's right. And starts to have to make it up again. So the interesting part about this is that we said before that Lowndes on the hard tyre was relatively better than yesterday because he was reasonably close to Winterbottom pretty much all day. The interesting part of this is that over recent events, FPR have really struggled. The Factory Falcons have really struggled on the soft tyre. And Winterbottom now is on the soft tyre versus Craig Lowndes. So this is pretty lively. These two, as Lowndes has a dive in the middle of the valley at turn Five, turn six has got that done, and out he comes. Will Davison now in. Now Neil's talking Will stocks up because there's basically 15 laps of a short sprint tyre run. There's the soft tyre. And this is essentially what we were talking at the start of the race as the best way to optimise your overall performance. James Moffat's in the same bank. A little bit further back. He's going to come out at good. the moment. We'll, we'll be 16th or 17th, maybe a little further back. Yeah, he's got to do 17 laps on these tyres, which is it's about the number, isn't it? OK, so he's come out in the 18th spot. So, 18th spot, 17 laps to go on the soft tyre. It's 48 seconds from the lead. That's what he's got to make up. Well, uh, he's a fair chance to get onto the podium because he's got to make... 38 seconds to get to Craig Lowndes. So, based on that, that's that's probably achievable against Lowndes because Lowndes will be on the soft tyre for a lot longer and will have a much higher degradation late in this race. But there's only 16 full laps to go. Yes. So you've got to start making it up at a rate of a couple of seconds a lap. But Lowndes came in on lap 45, so they're almost 10 laps older as Caruso and Rick Kelly play dodgem cars coming onto the straight. Both these guys are on soft tyres also. They separate so wide because of that oil down the middle of the track. And Caruso gets down the inside. Right behind is James Courtney. This is for position. 12th, 13th and 14th in what has been a pretty hectic motor race. The amount of damage on the car is always indicative of how wild it is. And there's not too many cars with straight panels. So you can see the front of Caruso's car is damaged and the front of Tander's car, or Courtney's car, sorry, as he goes down the inside of Rick Kelly, turn six. So out of that little three-part battle group that we're looking at, Michael Caruso's got fresher soft tyres than the other two, and James Courtney's got fresher soft tyres than Rick Kelly. So uh, having a fair breathe, that car isn't there's something, there's a tyre smoke with a lot of something going on at the back of it. Just on the numbers, if you look at the number of laps remaining in the race, for Will Davison to come back into play and be a factor, it's just under three seconds a lap gain, average. 2.93 seconds. It's a big number. Yeah. All right, all right. 
I'm being captain negative. I'm saying it can't be done. But if, if it ends up if it ends up like that, Neil, I'm, I'm perfectly prepared to say that's a good strategy. No, I'm not. I'm not sure with it, what what it means at the moment. Just chucking the number out there, <laughs> but it's a big number. It, you know, for a while it'll look good, but when they when all parties get to the bottom of the bucket near the end of this race, yes. what they're left dealing with in grip is going to be pretty sad. Courtney's come back into pit lane. Yeah, so the last part of the puzzle is a safety car. If a safety car pops into the world, then anyone on a sprint tyre will be in good shape. However... Well, that's a different argument that's now. a different one. Yeah. Now you're just picking fights. So Courtney's day is done. You, you saw it before, didn't we? Mm. Yeah. Sending out all the wrong smoke signals. It looked, looked to me to be worse than tyre smoke when we saw that shot of it on the brow on the top of the hill there. I can't remember a worse weekend for the Toll Holden racing team. They have had a disastrous Northern Territory visit. As we see Jamie Winkup. Yep. Yeah, boys, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm just down under James Courtney's car. I don't know if we can get a camera shot in under there, Rick, but you can see the lower shock absorber mount. See where the shock absorber mount is dipping under there? Now that's broken off. I just spoke to Scott Sinclair, as you can hear, they think it was contact possibly with one of the Kelly boys, but it just goes to show when you're not on a roll, well, you're not on a roll, eh? So that uh, bottom mount mounts off the diff housing. The diff housing's a very complex pieces of engineering in the cars. In fact, it's one of the biggest differences between car to car throughout the field. And there's three or four different mountings on the bottom of the shock absorber mount, which changes the effective ratio in which the shock absorber works. So you can stiffen or soften the way the action of the shock absorber works on the bottom of the diff housing. And it's broken that mounting where that adjustment is given. So, as I said before, Wink Cup driving the car really nice, very, very smooth. So, Wink Cup last lap 12 0, Holdsworth 12 1, Lowndes 10 8. Now, uh, the first two are on the hard tyre, but we're starting to see we're, we're entering that phase for some where there's big, fluctuation, big fluctuations in lap speed due tyre condition. Just keep an eye on Will Davison's lap speed. He's passed the second sector on this particular lap. He's 15th in the field at the moment. A 1.10.5 that time around for Will Davison. So that's one and a half seconds. And we were talking just under three seconds required. For the amount of laps that he had left. So the good part of the story is for someone like Will Davison, who we're seeing incredibly good lap speed from, conversely, we're seeing really bad stuff for Rick Kelly. You made the comment when he first put these tyres on, last lap was a 12.9. Yeah, I was a bit unsure as to what they were thinking there with that one. Lowndes now on Holdsworth. Lowndes has the oh. soft tyre. Holdsworth doesn't. A little bit wide for car 33. And Craig Lowndes will go up into second position now. So the gap between him and his teammate is 4.7 seconds. So this will be interesting too, 12 laps remaining. Craig has done 12 laps on this set of soft tyres. His teammate is 4.7 seconds up the road. And we might be making one oversight here in this discussion, back with Will Davison, up to 14th now. That was uh, Dean Fiore that he passed last time through. That's, it's not... Uh, impossible that someone might get better tyre life. Now, if you cast your mind back two years, I know it's a long time to Perth, Craig Lowndes did the seemingly impossible on some soft tyres there. Oh, this oh, will be the safety no. car. The safety car for Reindler at the top of the hill. This changes the game. Now it's anyone's game. Oh, this is a dramatic moment in this race. This is going to be a very big impact. No question about this for Carl Reiner. Oh, This was uh, another chassis for Carl this weekend, the third in successive race meetings. That's 200 kilometres an hour the cars make up there in, in the approach to turn 11. So race control, no doubt, about to activate the safety car. Oh, Tim Schenken. <laughs> wow, this is seriously, he could not script it any better than this. With just over 10 laps to go, 
Oh, some guys are going to be battling. Yeah. Some guys are going to be in beautiful race cars. So Lee Holdsworth and uh, Richard Holway, they've just had a radio exchange. You can imagine what they were saying about their fortunes. Reindler is mobile again. Interesting. Well, these are nervous times for everybody here at the circuit. Pit lane, race control. If you're in the cockpit, right around the circuit at home, supporting your favourite driver. But let me tell you, whoever your favourite driver is, chances are he's in the race. Because courtesy of this safety car, yeah. it is going to be an enormous sprint to the finish. While the Pettis safety car is still out there, I'll run you through the scenario. Nine full laps to go. This is what triggered it. Jamie Winkup leads the race. He's on hard tyres. Craig Lowndes second. He's on soft tyres, but they've done 15 laps. Mark Winterbottom's third. His soft tyres have done 14 laps. Lee Holdsworth on hard tyres is fourth. Then Van Gisberg and Slade, Ingle, Dalberto, Davison, Johnson, Caruso, Barguana, Rick Kelly are all on soft tyres that have done a stack of laps. Will Davison's 14th with the best set of soft tyres out there. The question is, does he have enough speed to mow through the field in the space of what will now become eight laps in a race to the finish? Does Jamie Wincup have enough on these hard tyres to hold off this field? Extraordinary. Oh, dear. So this restart will be ultra important. Not only that, they've got to get past turn one again. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, that's right. <laughs> but that, that's perhaps the, the really important part. So cleaner exit off the final corner today versus yesterday for all. And in terms of pure speed, Will Davison's clearly the one to watch. He's got the best set of boots. Down to one they go on the restart. On lap 62 out of 69, Lowndes goes up alongside his teammate. Remember, Lowndes on the soft tyre. But sooner or later, they'll start to fade away. Can he do the impossible and make them work for him? He hits the race lead. Van Gisbergen pulls up alongside Lee Holdsworth. Everybody's a target at this restart. Winterbottom saw the race vanish in front of his eyes yesterday. Can he get it back today? Now, Lowndes and Winterbottom have got to make their soft tyres do 24 and 23 laps respectively. They just got a breather, but that is still an awfully long way to ask those tyres to run. A little bit of contact there for Lee Holdsworth. He got a tap from Russell Ingle. Greg Murphy's back in this picture as well. How's Lee Holdsworth's luck with this? 
those older hard tyres. He's not even in the battle now. He's got a huge target on his back and they're just going to pick him off one by one. But the biggest guy to watch right now is Will Davison. Who has to make a soft tyre live for 17 laps. Much better set of numbers, but he doesn't have the track position. He's 13th. Even though the field's compressed, he's six and a half seconds off the lead on this lap. Gis Van Gisbergen now to third. He's on the soft tyre. Winkup's on the hard tyre, used. Lowndes leads it by 1.2 seconds from Winterbottom. So the two guys going backwards are Winkup and Holdsworth. The only two guys on hard tyres in the top ten. And there's Davison down the inside of Dalberto. Well, he's just got to go nuts. There's no, no other way about it. He has got to go completely berserk to get to the end of this race. He's got the best set of tyres. What he needs is track position. And the lap counter is going against him. Look at the wall. There's a sea of colour in front of him. There's half a dozen cars of all denominations. <laughs> and he's got to try and get under, over, round, inside, outside. It's a big job. And you know, the guy that's looking strong is Ingle also. He's looking very good. Stopped on lap 45. So no. He's got to do 24 laps on his soft. And he's going better than Slade. Russell loves this circuit. So has Van Gisbergen. He looks strong. But it's been six years since Russell Ingle last won a race in the championship. Wouldn't that be something if he could get another race victory here at Darwin? That would make seven race wins at the circuit. The breather may have saved these tyres, you know. And Van Gisbergen has been very good on these soft tyres the whole time. And he looks strong, doesn't he? He's got by now. Up into second. His tyres are exactly the same in terms of the amount of laps they've done as the guy who's leading the race, Craig Lowndes. So it's Lowndes, Van Gisbergen, Winterbottom. All on soft tyres pretty much exactly the same life they've had. Slade is fourth, then Russell Ingle. Jamie Wincup on the hard tyres going backwards. Where's Will Davison? Tenth. There he is, up into tenth. tenth. So he's climbing through them, but uh, enough laps left is the question mark. It's not many to the chequered flag. This is Michael Caruso in front of him for ninth. You can actually see the job that he's got to do. It's a great exit. That tyre will have more drive off the final corner. He easily plucks him off. Looking at the shift lights, grabs six, checks the traffic. Last time around, Van Gisbergen was quicker than Lowndes at the front of the field. Half a second faster, in fact. So, amazing, isn't it? with 1.1 second lead, Lowndes to Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen looks very racy. And, and the, clearly, the, giving them the little rest has given these tyres a, a, a second lease of life. Well, remember yesterday, Shane Van Gisbergen was playing that card as well. He was holding on to his set of tyres for the end of the race. Unfortunately, got tangled up in that mess down at Turn 1. So has it come to play with the soft tyre here this time around? Van Gisbergen slate. Whoa. Fabian Coulthard. That looks like that sounded like oil. someone gone. That's Greg Murphy, who's rotated on the oil at the top of the hill. There's oil coming out of Fabian Coulthard's car, and that's caught Greg out. So there'll be oil around there when they go around next time. There's your race leader. There's second position. So, so drivers being warned, as you can hear on the radio, about the oil that you just saw. Coulthard's car leaving up the top of the hill. Van Gisbergen, Slade and Davis and Alex, that is, second, third and seventh. So Stone Brothers racing cars well represented in the top ten. 36-year-old Craig Lowes, three-time series champion, done the lot. And the 22-year-old Kiwi is trying to climb all over him and snatch this race victory. This is where the oil is, guys, so be real careful. Here they come. They tip the <laughs> tire around there. The crowd goes berserk. This is awesome racing. He wants to make his move. Collected his first ever race win. 
go. In Hamilton earlier this year, he's only got one next to his name. Lowndes has 77. He'll have a look at him at the bottom here. He's right under the wing. Watch for him in the braking area. Here he goes. Lowndes doesn't cover. And here he is, down the inside. Very good pass, Shane Van Gisbergen. Side by side, Lowndes had to tap the brakes heavy. Ross and Jimmy Stone from Stone Brothers Racing start fist pumping. They can feel this one coming their way. Will Davison keeps moving up. He's now tucked in behind his brother. Will's in eighth. Two and a half laps to go. Van Gisbergen. Shouting, trying to focus, keeping the SP Tools Falcon pointed straight ahead. That tyre life would start really to feel like mushrooms underneath him now. Marshmallows, I mean. And look at the crowds! One of us. Wow! Oh, that oh. cost Shane. That cost him. He slipped a bit on the oil. It took him out into the dust on the outside. Lance comes back. Craig has a good look at it. And Paul Forgey and everybody at Stone Brothers Racing acutely aware of the image they just saw of the little slip up at the top of the hill for Shane. Ford have only won one race this year. This could be another one. And this was this guy before Van Gisbergen. And look how wide he was. Neil pointed out he almost went off the road. That was almost gone. You've just got to contain yourself now. Drive the car at nine tenths. Don't make a mistake. He got a bit of an advantage there too. He pulled away. He has pulled away a bit from Lowndes. He won't want to ease off. And now Will goes through past his brother. So that takes Will Davison up to seventh. Wind Cup would be his next target. He's going to run out of laps. Van Gisbergen now controlling the race. He's got a little bit of a buffer. It takes the pressure off just enough. Winterbottom in third. The valley erupts again. For one more time, they'll go around. This young Kiwi, they've wanted him to focus. <laughs> How do you like this? So, at the end of this lap, he'll have done 24 laps on these softer Dunlop tyres with the safety car intervention as a result of the Carl Reindler off. And that little breather has done these tyres a massive favour. Compressed the field and changed everything. So Van Gisberg and Lowndes, Winterbottom, Slade, Ingle. Wing Cup with Davison closing. Alex Davison next, Steve Johnson and Jason Bargwana. That's your top ten. Big slide then for Van Gisbergen. He's only got about six or seven corners to go. He's still got to be careful. He's still got to be very careful. He's got it sideways. Oil around that part of the circuit. But Shane Van Gisbergen has bounced back beautifully on this Sunday race day. He started from 12th position. He was in the mix yesterday. He's only won once before in the V8 Supercar Championship. And he may well take this thing across the line sideways. He's held off one of the best of all time. And the Gears gets it done in the top end. Awesome, boys. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Good job again. Thank you. Craig Lowndes pulls up alongside him in second spot. What a great race and a great effort from Stone Brothers to have all those cars in the top eight. Look how sideways he is. He was so sideways at the last corner. Neil and I looked away from each other and thought, oh, no. <laughs> so Mark Winterbottom third. As you mentioned, Tim Slade there now pulls up alongside his teammate for fourth. Russell Ingle fifth. Jamie Winkup sixth. Will's late charge, Will Davison, that is, ended in seventh spot. Wow. Phew, what a race. It's always a magic moment, Skafer, when you can hear the crowd over these V8 supercars. Oh, certainly is. There's not many places with a real amphitheatre in this. Two or three areas on this track. And as he's right out now sideways again, look at this. This is speedway action. And he's enjoying every moment. <laughs> he drove so well at his home race in New Zealand to win. And today, another dose of Falcon victory.
And this is drifting in Shane Van Gisbergen style. It's pretty much like his last lap. <laughs> <laughs> Odds on, he ends up in the grass. Oh, odds on, those tyres again will never go on another race car. It's hard to see them doing test miles on those, isn't it? And this is the amphitheatre I was talking about. It's such a great reaction from the locals. They love this event. Look at that. Fantastic. It's pretty easy to spin with these now, Cropper. <laughs> that, that, look at it's got rubber. belt hanging out of the tyre. Yeah. That tyre's totally destroyed. Oh, that's easy to spin there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done. Uh, he meant to do that. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> where he's going in. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, great result. And uh, they had a great test at Queensland Raceway prior to this event, since we were last at uh, Winton. And... Uh, Another fantastic victory for Stone Brothers Racing and SP Tools with the Ford Falcon and Shane Van Gisbergen. So he had that taste of victory back in New Zealand. That was an incredible moment for him. And this one's going to be sweet too. So two Falcons on the podium. Great job. Three different teams make up your podium. He won't be, he won't be very excited when he gets out here, Matt. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Well done, and a great reaction. He's a young man with a great future, and again, a very mature drive today to be able to pass one of the best drivers of all time in Craig Lowndes. Now 22 years old, he got his first race win on the streets of New Zealand. And we mentioned that he was in the mix yesterday, but to hold off somebody well done, like brother. Craig Lowndes, Mark Winterbottom, to finish off that race in the fashion that he did, Showed a lot of maturity well done. and a hell of a racer. Well, Shane Van Gisbergen, congratulations. You got so close yesterday, you got it done today. Yeah, yesterday was a bit of a shambles, so to come out today, we had a bit of luck there with the safety car, but, you know, that was our strategy, what, what we hoped for. And, you know, I just uh, conserved my tyres, and then I could see Lounsey and Winterbottom sliding a bit and, yeah, pick my moves and got the winners. Fantastic. Thanks to our sponsors, SP Tools, Citizen, Ford, of course, Fox Oil, and all our other great sponsors. It's... um. Very, very good day. Shane, you made Jimmy and Ross Stone very, very happy in the garage. They were thrilled with you. Oh, yeah, it was just an awesome job. And those guys did a, a great job today as well, the boys. Great pit stops, awesome strategy, and uh, another set of uh, smoke Dunlop tyres. <laughs> and what was it like tracking down one of the greatest names in V8 supercar racing as you came towards the line? I wasn't thinking about that too much, but um, I could see he was in trouble with his rear tyres. And after I passed him, I didn't have much left either, but, yeah, kept my head down and come away with the result and uh, it's perfect for our championship. Enjoy the top spot on the podium, well done. I will, thank you. Craig Lowndes, uh, another great performance from Lowndesy, two rounds and, and two podium finishes, Craig. That was some jewel in those last few laps. Yeah, it was, Barrett's, and I think that the Stone guys normally have that strategy right at the end and looking for that safety car, and it, and it came to them. We, uh, we were looking pretty good there for a while and uh, having a great battle with Frosty, and, of course, uh, right at the end with that safety car. Lost the rear a little bit, just didn't quite have the drive that I wanted, but, uh, look, we're still uh, delighted to be up here on the podium a second, the third yesterday and second now, so not too bad. It's good for your championship. Well, it is. It's uh, something we're just sort of trying to keep uh, consistent running now. And, uh, of course, uh, endurance are coming. Scafie and I are looking forward to it. Well done, Lousy. Congratulations. No, nice, thanks. And Mark Winterbottom, boy, what a weekend. You've slaved away this weekend. You've made the podium. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Um, great re reward for the team. We uh, Two pole positions. She's good over one lap. we just got to tweak her a little bit on these soft tyres. But um, at least the Ford won. The right brand won today, and that's, uh, that's important. Well, it's definitely heading in the right direction, Frosty. We look forward to Townsville. Well done. Yeah, bring it on. Thank you. Hey, Jamie Winkup, we actually thought you were looking pretty good there, mate. It looks like you got done over by that late safety car that let everyone's soft tyres recover. Yeah, thanks, Lyco. Um, hey, tough race, pretty hot out there, and um, it all comes down to strategy and safety car. And um, Had a little bit of time in the sun there in the middle. We, we were looking pretty good, and as soon as I saw Carl go off, which he went off just a couple of metres in front of me, I thought, oh, that's, uh, that's the end of me. But, um, hey, hard battle towards the end there. We uh, picked up a few points, but that's what hey, that's what this year's all about. Right tyres at the right time. Thanks, mate. Good to see you chin up. Well done. <laughs> Great, cheers. <laughs> so let's have a look at those results for you from race number 13 and a tight margin at the end between Shane Van Gisbergen and Craig Lowndes. Less than a second. Mark Winterbottom in position three. Interesting to contemplate the charge for Van Gisbergen. He qualified 12th 
for this race to come through with the race win. Looking further afield, Dumbrell, Caruso, Moffat climbing up the field. Steve Owen, we saw him start from pit lane. Lee Holdsworth, after being a contender for a race win, finishing in 15th and a tough day at the office for the Toll Holden Racing Team. Courtney and Tanda, 24th and 26th, and a shocker for Todd Kelly and Jason Bright.